So this ring kind of caught my fancy today, um, pretty much every day since I bought it a while back. Look at that. Aren't those rubies crazy? Okay, so this is a 1940s ring. Um, it's ruby and diamond. And again, it looks better when I shine a light on it. And it has a nice emerald cut in the middle, and it has these invisibly set rubies. And the rubies are actually set, you can see it's like got a bowed design to it. And they're set, all these little guys that are all like square and little skinny rectangles are set into this lattice. So if I turn it from the back, you can kind of see it. There's the metal. And the stones are actually cut one at a time and they're grooved on the side, so you actually slide them in. Um, it's called invisible setting or mystery setting. Van Cleef and Arpels um, patented it in 1933, but there's other designers that have done it. Aletto Brothers is someone that we carry that they do amazing mystery setting. Um, but this one, this is actually a very unusual little guy because he is retro. So from the late deco period kind of thing, 1930s to early 1940s, the retro period is really unusual because it was kind of characterized by bolder, more cocktail ready kind of jewelry on a slightly larger scale. This one kind of bridges the gap between the late twenties, um, pardon, the late thirties and the early forties, which we kind of know is the period of World War II. Um, this guy is bowed and he's very architectural. He's very structured. He has these beautiful diamonds kind of on the side that highlight him with the big guy in the middle. Um, the rubies are all latticed and set in there in that really cool way. This piece is actually French. Um, I think we all know that the French kind of suffered a lot during World War II, but clearly did not forfeit their passion for design. This piece kind of makes me think of the Chrysler building with the scallops and the edging and the super like geometric uh, distinctive deco design, but this is very streamlined. It's very retro going into like airplanes and cars and that kind of more industrial and machiney kind of a, a look. So this is a really cool ring, very unusual. I wish I could pull out French deco and retro every day for you, but I can't. Um, it's just super unusual and it's comfortable because of the way it's made on the sides. It's still narrow, although a really powerful looking ring. So this is very different. We have modern day um, invisible setting that's more like this. This is more 80s or 90s. This as well that we would call vintage. So it's lovely, it's really well made, but it doesn't really compare to a piece like this. So this is the kind of thing that you dig and you dig and you hope you can find and really it's very uncommon and very special. These kinds of things are made more frequently nowadays. Um, there's still a, mm, a bear to uh, set or repair. Um, lots of times inexperienced jewelers will just say they have to glue the stones back in if something happens, but really good jewelers like somebody like Alfredo Aletto would actually take the piece apart and groove the stones and put them back together properly. Anyway, I wish I was a jeweler. I'm not. I'm just a fan. So anyway, hope you all have a great day. Bye.